Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. Found a neat little utility I thought you might like called F Ping. F is in Frank. So F Ping. Really neat little tool. It's uh, similar to the HR Ping I like to use, but this has a few extra features HR Ping doesn't have. Possibly yet. Who knows? Um, it's at this website. <laughs> Watch me butcher this name. Quackle Flap. Hey, you know what? That might even be close. Who knows? So you go to this site, quackleflap.com, and F Ping is a free download. Okay. And again, it's a command prompt based tool. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is a few little notes for you. When you download the tool, you just basically unzip it and it creates a directory structure. And here you'll see some registry files. You don't have to use these, by the way. This text file explains what these are doing. You may not need them. All right. It depends on what you want to do. We have a 32-bit file or folder, sorry, and a 64-bit folder. So if I double click on this guy, because that's what I have, 64-bit folder, say that three times, you'll see fping.exe. So what I had to do, and you may have to do this as well, is go to properties, and within properties, I go to compatibility, and I have to make sure I run this program as an administrator, okay? And that way you don't get uh, some of the socket errors that you might get uh, if that was not selected. The second thing I have to do, I'm just going to minimize this guy, is I need to go to the command prompt as an administrator. Okay, those are two pretty important things. If you don't do that, you're probably going to have some issues. So we're going to minimize this stuff and just concentrate on him. And I've got my commands as always in a little note pad, and I'm just going to bring them in bit by bit and show you what they are. So the first one, F ping a host dash capital S or uppercase S 80 slash 200. Now what that's going to do for you is ping something obviously and it's going to range or increment the size of the payload from 80 through 200 and then you can see the time see how the time changes depending on the size all right so that's a really neat little exercise if you have to go through that and uh, you don't have to manually do a dash l 80 81 all that kind of stuff just give it a range which is kind of nice second thing i'm going to show you is this the dash g option or switch and what that does for you is it's a range so in this case I did 1044.10.40 slash 1044.10.60 so what it's doing is literally pinging everything from 40 through 60 there's 41 42 43 44 see and basically it just tells you if something's there or not so it's a ping sweep that's all it is so sometimes you just want to do this from the command prompt quick and dirty don't want to download a bunch of stuff this is a great way to do it I'm going to just control C and break out of this guy and on the same vein or the same command, I'm going to add something, a dash B, lowercase b. And what that does, you're not going to hear it. Every time uh, you get a reply, you get a beep, which is kind of nice. So if you just want to know when something replies, you get this audible beep from your computer. It's just a very slight little beep. It's nothing too atrocious. Um, I've used this quite a bit, not so much for the range, but if I just want to see when something comes up, here, I'll show you here. So if I was just doing something like this, pinging my router, and every time it comes back, oops, I'm sorry, I left that G in there, and every time it replies, I get a beep. Okay. Now, if it went down for whatever reason, then I don't hear the beep. So if I just want something in the background to let me know when something comes back up, that's a really neat option. All right, on to something else the dash t or uppercase t parameter what that does is it gives you the time stamp okay this is really helpful if you're deciding to uh, write this to a log which is coming up next and you can either do a dash t uh, if you want the date as well you can, you can actually do a, a dash d if you want and of course you can do them both as well okay coming on to the log topic you can write this stuff to a log okay? and for the people who uh, know me fairly well I'm kind of the batch file guy. So this is a great way to write to a bat in a batch file. You can write your results to a text file. Now, this is different than the typical greater than uh, sign or the redirection that you can do from the command prompt because in this case it writes the log and shows you what's going on at the screen. So if I was to do a greater than, well, then at that point you wouldn't see anything until the end. The command prompt would just come back. All right. Another neat little option is dash o. And I like dash o. Even hrping does this. 
And basically, dash O doesn't show you all the pings, the individual pings and the responses or no responses. It just shows you the end result, which sometimes is all you need. So your screen's not cluttered with hundreds or dozens of these ping commands, especially if you were to do something like a dash T, for example, and uh, just have this thing run forever. Okay. Next one. Um, yeah, I'm just typing these things in now. It's not, not that much work. I can do something called a dash D. And what this is, this goes on that theme that I tell people about packet bookmarking. And in this case, I'm going to ping as part of my troubleshooting or baselining engagement, and I want to put a note in a ping. So that way later on in Wireshark, when I actually look at my trace, I'll see a note in there, and it'll tell me what I was doing at that time. So in this case, I'm typing in running, um, I don't know, SQL search uh, with old software. Okay. Oh, if I can type it right, these fingers. And then when I do that, what I need to do, just to prove to you it actually works, I'm going to bring Wireshark into the picture here, capture, start, and then I'm going to send my ping. And there they go. Okay. And you can see the pings here, and in the request you can actually see running SQL search with old software. See. So if you just wanted to make a couple of notes here and there in a trace file, instead of writing it down on paper, or if you don't or you can't write anything down for whatever reason, this is a really neat way of doing it, okay? So I hope that helps. Have a good day. Bye for now.